Hi, this is, uh, I've done a couple of takes on this. I'm trying to be as concise as I can. This is gonna be a longer video. Um, this is a full review and I hope a couple of demonstrations of the KME sharpening system. I've had this for a couple of years now and I've probably done about, I would have done a thousand sharpenings on it by now. Um, I use this for all of my knife testing sharpenings and also just all my general sharpening, um, sharpening for friends, family, all that sort of stuff. So. I've sharpened all kinds of knives on this, and what I intend on doing is talking about the system, what it's good for, um, what parts of it I would say are essential, uh, what you can expect in terms of which parts age and will need to be replaced, um, and just, yeah, also, um, I wanna show you how it works and how I use it, because any tool, I, you always notice that people will get in the comments and say, oh, I don't do it like that, I, you know, you should be doing it like this, and that may well be the case. I think my results with this speak for themselves. I get some pretty good edges on it. I've never been amazing at sharpening and this is certainly really, you know, thousand percent improved my edges since I've had this. Um, so we're just gonna talk about what the basic system is and what um, I think are essential additions to it to make it a really like um, excellent home system. So let's get into it. So in most basic terms, the KME system is this jig here, which holds the knife and then this part here, which holds the stone. This rod goes through there, which is adjustable up and down using this knob here, down and up. And that gets you different angles that you can sort of repeat and set on your pocket knives. In my opinion, this is mainly for hobbyist pocket knife enthusiasts. Um, it gets you those mirror polished edges as long as you have the right stones and allows you to repeat them without having to you know, readjust things every time. Uh, once you've got a handle on doing a knife, all it'll take is a couple of practice strokes and you can just repeat the same edge over and over again. And I'll show you how I do all that as well. So this is the most basic kit. It's these two pieces here, this kind of pistol grip part. So it's just basically designed to be held like in almost like a somewhat portable sense Rod goes through this sort of nylon guide hole there. You just put your knife in the guide there and you can just, you sit there sharpening. You just hold it like this and you can face it away from you. You can hold it backwards and face it towards you. That's it, that's the system. Um, but already when you're looking at mine here, there's a, a couple of little improvements that I would definitely suggest. So the rod, which holds the stone, comes with a really short little knob. And what I've done here, my friend Chris sent me a replacement, like a longer uh, guide rod holding knob. And that is really important because that's what makes it a more pleasant, longer term sharpening experience. This isn't a quick sharpen your knife in 10 minutes and you're done. This is for fussing over your knives and making them the way you like them. So you gotta make it as comfortable as you can. So this is essential. Another thing is essential are these little loopy, locky, these guys. So what these do, these sit on the rod in two different spots and you adjust these to which knife you're using it with. And what they do is they stop the sharpening stone from going past the knife this way and past the knife this way. As in they hold, they set an area of the rod that gets used and only that area and you line it up with the knife and make it so the stone doesn't leave the knife no matter where you push. So you can't push past the knife edge pretty much and have these parts of it scraping up onto the face of the blade or whatever. So you basically have it so, you tune it so you will have one stopper here at this end One stopper there, one stopper there. You can't go further than those points. And that's really helpful because when you don't have, particularly I notice when you don't have this one closest to the stone, you start getting little scratches on the surface of your blade from going up too far past it. So very, very important, I think, to have those two there and this extra knob there. I believe when I got the camera, it just came with the one. So attaching a second was, uh, it definitely helped my, um, the, my superficial uh, edges anyway because the the blade face just above the edge often had a few scratches in it. So that's the basic part here. How does it work? Take that off. So the knife is held in these jaws. These jaws are held shut with this knob here and also I guess with this spring here. You push the spring in and the jaws 
flop open. The jaws have little silicon rubberized bits in there, which on mine are starting to sort of come off. I just glue these back down every now and then. Again, I'll get into that with the parts that kind of decay that you may need to maintain or change. Uh, what you do is you put your knife in those jaws and I'll talk to you about how to line the knife up. Actually, I'll do that now. You line the knife up, I do it. So the edge, I think of, if I was to draw a straight line between the start of the edge and the tip, I would want that straight line to be parallel with the flat jaws there. So say with the Spydeco Delica, it's about there now, all right? Sometimes you wanna pull it along just a little tiny bit. And then once you're good, you tighten up this knob here. Sort of hard to do it facing the camera, but uh, straighten it up there. So you tighten that up. There's always a bit of movement until you really reef it down. You really reef this down. Don't be scared to, to over tighten it. I've never done it any sort of mischief at all. So that to me looks about right, you know, eyeballing it through the camera. If I was to draw a straight line from that point there to that point there, that straight line would be about a parallel line to these jaws here, and that's how I set it up. Next essential thing for the KME is a Sharpie. These jaws are good. They hold it really nice and firm. The rubber is pretty good in there. But once you start introducing oil, especially towards like the middle or the end of a sharpen when you're using maybe your, your uh, sticker hones, this can go wandering a little tiny bit. So what you do is you put a black line, nice thick stout black line there, so you can start to notice if the knife, and I'll just loosen it up a little bit, if the knife starts to wander, you can notice before, you know, before you sharpen, you know, your sharpening starts to get a bit of a, a crooked, you know, lower angle at one end of the knife or whatever, you can start to get slight little smiles or whatever. So just a nice straight line drawn with your Sharpie really, really helps to make sure that the blade stays, so you can notice it staying really, because you get into it and you sort of forget to check. So having a nice black line, you can always make sure is level with the, the jaws is a really good idea. Sharpie is also great for you color in your edge. And that way you know, you can when you start doing your practice strokes to make sure your angle's how you like it, you can see how much material you're removing. You can see if you're, if you color this in nice and generously black along there, and you see it being removed without the edge being affected, then you know you're lowering your angle and you're gonna be, eventually when you catch up with that edge, you'll have a, a lower edge angle and a sort of a thinner edge as well. So this is how you do it. Or if you just want to repeat a factory edge, just color it in nice and neatly, do your practice strokes and you'll see um, you know, if you've got your factory edge proper. It's really interesting to see what some companies do as factory edges. Some companies are 22 degrees, some companies are 20 degrees. Spider core often about 18 degrees, 19 degrees, um, and you sort of figure it out. So the guide system here is kind of the the selling point of it. It's this locking, repeatable sort of sense of, you know, down the bottom here, it's lined up with the 17 degrees on the side, so 17. Moving it up here to the top, you get to 25, you get up to 30 degrees, you know, for sharpening like a, a, a pair of scissors or something, I don't know, like, um, what's, a tw what's a 30 degree edge? I don't know, block splitting knife, <laughs> who knows? Um, you can reverse this as well. If you want to do lower angles than 17, you can just unscrew this part here. You know, you don't have to take the whole thing apart and you can just sort of you can upside down this guy. Maybe I'll do it to take the part. Stand by. I generally do have it in this configuration, so it's not a particular pain for me to put it back this way. It is how I like it. So I've gone and put it facing the other way because it's just a piece of steel that fits in those tracks. You push this securing back plate there and you tighten that down again. So now I can go lower angles than that 17 degrees. I can go sort of down to there. But as you start to see, I am gonna be limited by these points on the sharpener as well. So if I go too low, the stone isn't even gonna to touch the knife edge and it's gonna get caught up on this stuff. So I'm just a massive nerd and I like to go maybe 16, 15 degrees sometimes. 
you don't really need to do that. If you're happy with a 17 degree edge on most of your knives, then it's fine. Of course, you can just, all this stops is for you to be able to do these really higher edges, like these 30 degrees numbers and things like that. So um, right now, so this is like the, the, the biggest edge I can go is 25 degrees per side. And the lowest I can go is probably about 15 before it starts to really catch and scrape on this and miss the edge of the knife. But anyway, just a little nerdy extra you can do uh, with your sharpening. Right. So that's sort of how the whole thing works. You put your sharpening stone in there and you just sharpen away. And this won't move because it's locked in. Sharpen away. You've got your, you'll have your two points fixed in. You really can't go too far wrong. Um, it's great. Most essential purchase straight out of the box, straight from the company. Don't even, it should just come with it. Every kit should come with it is the base. So the base makes it a proper home sort of enjoyable sharpening system to use for longer periods of time. A combination of the base and a slightly longer knob here and you can go for ages and it's not a bother at all to use this system all about comfort because this isn't a quick system this is about fussing over your blades and fussing over your edges and making them really nice so the base is super essential so the base is just this piece of hardwood with a threaded screw that goes all the way through it slots into the bottom of this pistol grippy part of the KME, and there you go moves all the way around Base is shorter than where the knife will hang, so you can do the, and this is the cool thing about the KME. Once you've got your knife in, you never need to take it out because you can just gently tap on that, freeze, it frees up the, there's two sort of detents here on either side, and it frees up this from these detents. You can force it as well if you're going really fast, but it's always better to give a little bit of a push, kind of let it free fall, free rotate a bit, and there you go. So the base just makes all that much easier. Really, really recommend having the base. So let's talk about the abrasives. So most KMEs come with water stones. And again, because everything's repeatable on these systems, all the stones are like the same size, and then the strops are the same size as the stones, and the diamond plates are the same size. So this is a set of four water stones. And frankly, I've only used these a couple of times. Um, I got these later in the piece. My kid, I just went straight to the diamond, um, diamond hones, the gold series diamond hones. And that's where I would recommend basically everyone start as well. Unless you particularly like the water stone edges, which, you know, they get, you can get pretty nice water stones with the finer, uh, you get pretty nice edges with finer water stones and then a strop for sure. Just less time taken, um, this can be a lengthy process and I find the water stones can take a little bit longer than the diamond stones and um, the diamond stones can get really nice aggressive ones. Um, they just seem a bit more decisive and I, I suggest, whilst you probably get some water stones, I would suggest definitely getting these um, gold series diamond homes. Let's show you them now. Alrighty, so these are the diamond homes, right? These are probably the ones you definitely need, I would say, are 1,500, 600, 300, and then probably just one of these two. The Beast initially to me seemed like a great idea, but I've never had a steel that's really needed the Beast. The Beast is so rough, um, and I find actually with your high, quite high-tech steels, it almost like, it almost over... It does too much. It almost makes the gaps between... It almost serrates your edge slightly. It's hard to describe, but I would always start just at 140 or 100. And these are still not super... They're quite rough stone still. Um, you can sort of see this one I use the most. This one's a bit bound up with stuff. Um, 300 is probably my most used. 300 starting to be a bit more of just a finer, but still fairly abrasive. Unless I'm dealing with like Maximet or something, I usually start at 300 and just do a bit longer because I find it makes a really nice fine edge in the end to not have to worry about doing these really kind of bulk removey kind of stones here. Then 600 and 1500, work up through here. for Once you've set your edge, you'll just do a few minutes per side with each of these and it's fine. So these ones here are about setting your edge. So these coarser ones here, extra coarse or extra, extra coarse, or just coarse, they're about actually removing material to get your edge, you know, the shape that you want it. Then once you've got your edge of the shape you want it, you'll hone it with these guys here. That's kind of how I, I do it anyway. I will generally just go 100, 300, or 140, 300, and then the rest. The Beast really doesn't get any use from me. And I, I deal with, I, I mess with the crazy steels. It's just a bit much. 
And yeah, the 100 grid is, once my 140 starts binding up, or feels like it's on its way out, I'll swap to the 100, but either way, not a big deal. How long do the stones last? I would conservatively put them at about 200 good sharpenings per stone. Um, if I look at all these, the one that's probably on its way out now is... See, that's just bound up. That's not... That's just... That's not fallen out or anything like that. I would say my 300 stone is probably not what it used to be. Like, this should feel a little bit rougher than this. It's still an effective stone, but um, I would say this is probably the closest one to needing a replacement. But all these will still cut just fine. You start to notice just that they take a little longer to do it. I've, you, I've never had one that's, you know, just stopped cutting at all. Uh, it's just a matter of they slow down a bit. And then when you replace them, I know when I replace this 300, I'll be like, whoa, that's right. Because you actually start to feel the, the grind a bit more. Whereas right now, this kind of just, it's actually probably not too far off of what the 600 does. So I would say, yeah, 200 to 300 sharpenings. And keeping in mind, when you first get this, you'll do it wrong. Like you'll push too hard, you'll whatever. And that's fine too. Um, you definitely don't need to worry about like going through these really, really rapidly though. Like if you're not a complete nerd like me and doing like steel testing, even if you've got a, you know, a collection of 50 knives, you probably sharpen each of those knives once or twice before you need to replace any of these. They have really good longevity. Some of the other systems have bigger stones, which therefore will last longer because I guess you've got more surface to be shared amongst all the jobs. But in terms of longevity of the stones, I guess here's the thing. I've replaced the 15, 600, and 300 once uh, before. These have probably got a fair bit more life in them, and the 300 is probably going to get replaced fairly soon. The others have never been replaced. So there you go. So in terms of cutting, like your cutting stones or the stones are going to do the majority of the work, I'd suggest, unless you really love the whetstone type sharpening, the sort of takes a bit longer, um, I guess less aggressive possibly, I'd just go straight to the diamond hones to do your stock removal and your shaping. Uh, and then your choice is what sort of like uh, polishing or honing you're going to be doing. So again, you've got options. <laughs> you've got, I think what the KME is mostly known for is the diamond films. So these diamond films... As they say on them, microns is how far apart, obviously, the cutting surfaces or the cutting grinding parts of diamond are on the stickers. So three microns, you know, six microns, uh, 0.1 microns. You know, it's, um, it's a stage, again, it's like the same as the sharpening, it's just stages of uh, removal. You could use these to do your whole sharpening that would just take ages but you can certainly see them remove stock as they as they cut they you know they'll you put a drop of oil on these and you see the oil starts to go black pretty quickly that's still getting removed and and mixing with the oil so these still do cut especially up at the nine micron level that'll you know that'll still remove some stuff they're not purely just for polishing at this level um once you get to the 0.1 micron yeah you're just mirroring and you know really fussing over your edge what I would suggest is get all six of them. I love that I've got the different varieties. And then each sharpening, you use three. You space them out. So I'll go one sharpening, I might go nine micron, then three micron, and then one micron. And that'll be as sharp as I go. And then the next, to not go through stickers like crazy, I'll go six micron, uh, one micron, and then 0.5 micron. It's up, written that myself. And that's how I go. You don't need to go through all six, but I'd say three out of the six gets you a result thereafter. You could go through all six. You'd probably get an immaculate mirror edge, but it's about how much time you want to spend and how many of these you want to go through. Because unlike the stones, you do go through the films relatively quickly, like I, I do anyway. Um, I may still push too hard, but uh, it's just what, you, yeah, just what you're up for. But they're not super expensive to replace, and you can also just buy... Uh, bulk lapping films and just cut them to the size of the glass slides that they stick on as well. So that's one example of a uh, you know a polishing tool. And the other is the kangaroo leather strops. So the kangaroo leather strops are here. And what I've done on the back, I've written what type of compound or what kind of pa diamond paste I'm using on each strop so I don't mix them up. So 0.1, 1.5, four and 
And they, of course, correlate with these guys here, the little diamond gels. So this is like a CBN emulsion. So this is the four micron one. I'll put this one on the four micron drop and I'll, I'll do my best not to ever mix them up. Um, I haven't noticed a huge difference between either in terms of the eventual uh, result. I think with the, the leather strops, probably a more likely to last and you don't have to worry about uh, replacing them as often. One of my leather strops I've accidentally pushed back on once and taken a bit of the leather off, but it still works just fine. So really it's uh, whichever you kind of prefer the sound of the most. Uh, the leather strops plus the uh, emulsions is probably the longer lasting of the two. And then you know, whether you want to keep ordering KME's emulsions or find your own kind of little diamond emulsion from a hobbyist shop or something like that, uh, that's up to you. Cool thing about the KME is everything fits and everything's the same. So the stones are the same shape as the strops, which are the same shape as the, the glass slides, which the stickers sit on, which are the same shape as the Arcan Arkansas stones. All that um, lines up and is nice and uniform. So that's the coolest thing about the KME. Um, once everything, once your knife is on there and dialed in, no matter what abrasive you choose to swap to, it all stays you know, nice and uniform. Some other accessories you can get are pen knife jaws. So if you're doing like a little Victorinox or something like that, you see it's got less, less bite than the main one. So if your knife's just really short, you can still get good coverage with these jaws. So you're less likely to hit the jaws with the sharpening stone. Um, and then you can get a convexing rod, which is like a bent rod with a sort of a curve in it that you can do to sort of finish off like I've got a Falcon Even kitchen knife, which sort of by factory default has a convex edge on it. So I use this rod for that. Um, and there's a few other accessories you can get too, but I think the main most essential ones are a few extra of these because they do walk about and they do help obviously keep the knife tracking well and keep the stone guide tracking well. And then just your base. Base is most essential and also a knob, like a longer knob to actually steer the thing. It's most essential. All the other stuff, yeah, you have a look at it and decide for yourself. Just pick one stropping mechanism as well. Like, ah, off the top of my head, I'd probably go leather, leather and CBN emulsions, but then the CBN emulsions can get a bit messy. Um, you know, each to their own. Um, the strops, the diamond strops, the sticker strops, you'll need to just get some kind of oil as well. There's Dan's honing oil, which seems to do a pretty good job. Um, so that's that. Um, few consumables regardless of what you choose. None of them are crazy expensive to replace. So overall, a bit of a much of a muchness. You'll be able to get a good polish with either the leather strops or with the, the diamond sticker plates. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna sharpen two knives. I'm gonna sharpen this K390 Delicate to show its effectiveness against quite a difficult steel. K390 is higher than adium content, makes it you know not super easy to sharpen on like a standard bench stone, for example, unless you're really good. And then I'm gonna sharpen a kitchen knife just to show that um, you know it can do a bigger knife as well. All right. In terms of knife sizes, I have found that um, you know up to about eight inches it comfortably fits. Uh, once you get a bit larger than that, you'll find that just the angle of this thing can sometimes just, the angle starts to really vary from the beginning and the tip when you're doing it. And so you can kind of get start getting a really low angle on the tip which can make a tip a bit fragile or just remove a lot of material and just add a kind of a bit of a smile to each end, like a bit of a up on each end, which can be a little bit vis visually undesirable. So I would say my Spyderco kitchen knife here is about as big as I would go happily with the KME. But you may go bigger and be happier and it's totally fine. And it will work, it's just aesthetically, you can start to get some you know, bit of odd results, that's all. Right. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my Delica locked in here. I've got my Sharpie. I'm gonna draw a black line at the top of it so I can track. I'm gonna color in my edge so I can see it being removed. And I'm gonna show you how this thing works. All right, so we're set up, the K390 is in. I've got a pretty nice straight line between this and this point here. I've put this black Sharpie line near the clamp so I can see if the knife moves while I'm sharpening it. And I've colored in my edge black. This knife's already got an acid stain from some vinegar treatment I did to it. So the edge um, was already black, but the Sharpie will certainly show um, and you know, show me how it's going. 
Uh, K390, I am going to start with the 140 grit. Put it in my stone holder there, you see? And I've got my, just going to set it up here so you see. That's as far as it'll go on the stone because this is stopping it here. And I'm going to wind this back, see how far I want the stone to go there. So if I stop it there now and put it in with this guy here, so I will turn that to there and I will lock that in. And now, nothing but the stone will go against that edge, right? Now, I'm gonna dial my edge down to 17. There. And what I do now is I have an app on my phone called Angle and I will double check that this is 17. Sometimes, you know, your desk might be a bit crooked or whatever, but I generally, if it's reading 17, 16, 18, on this desk especially, my shed floor is a little bit wonky, I'll be happy with that. My kitchen table I know is completely flat, so if I'm doing it in there, I know the 17 is good. All right, so I've got it dialed into 17 degrees. I'm gonna do some, you know, few passes and just see what happens to that Sharpie on that edge. Alrighty. So what you can sort of see is it's pretty much 17 for the most of the belly there. And then on the tip, it's going to remove a little bit and then catch up with that black sort of down here. And then that tip will also be, yeah, as far as I can tell, 17. And just down here at the edge, commencement there's a little bit of a spot that's not getting contacted at all so i have to see what i'm doing there i might just need to like guide it with my hand push a little bit harder or whatever but otherwise it's looking pretty good so now i will do this until all the edges completely silver and i can start to feel a little bit of a burr developing on the other side and then i'll swap over I just use the weight of my hands and, you know, maybe a slight bit of extra pressure that just happens when you're jostling something like I'm jostling it. So you see that? I wouldn't have noticed it if I hadn't painted that black. I just, when I'm pushing at this edge, I've obviously kind of given it a bit extra gusto and the knife was briefly knocked out of being flat with that line. So I'll just tighten it down a little bit more. Yeah, and that's got it. So that's why it's really important to paint, uh, to draw that line underneath the, the edge there, just so you can definitively keep track of that. Alrighty, so I can feel a slight wire on the other side and I can see with my eyes that the silver is going all the way to the edge now. So it's good to swap over. Now, now it's fine to swap over and do that other side. And you can even feel that burr, like when you push the stone, it doesn't slide that easily when you first start. It even catches it a little bit just doing this. So yeah, very cool. And now it's gone. So it's just showing that it's bearing okay. And we just do the same again the other side. Cool, so I've pretty much I'm feeling the bear on the other side now. So I've pretty much got my edge how I want it. And just from looking at it, you can see the silver line isn't any 
thicker at some point than another point. It's all pretty even, so I'm pretty happy that my, my angle's set nice and consistently. And I'm not gonna do anything too weird to this edge. It's just got a nice uniform bevel on it. So I usually go just to be 100% safe, 100% sure that I'm definitely going over the whole apex and you know getting the whole apex bird. I'll do a you know a few minutes on each side, even still now. Probably removes a bit more stock than I'd need to, but I just generally what I do. Not not essential, but is what it is. Do you hear those few really aggressive kind of swishes as I started? That was the burst sort of getting pressed off and probably folding over to the other side. With your tips, don't ever let the stone roll off of them like that because that will that will round them over. Only all you ever need to do is just stop about with your stone covering half the tip, and that'll do you absolutely fine. Just try not to tilt the stone because that again can roll it off. If you just keep it flat and you just don't let it go too far over the edge, just let it kind of hang over about halfway, half the stone's width, you'll be absolutely fine. And if you have rolled over tips in the past, this can eventually restore a nice sharp tip just after a bit of material removal. So I'm happy that my edge has been shaped the way I like it shaped. Now I'm just going to move on up through those grits. So 300 will be the next one I've started, seeing I was doing 140 just now. And from here on in, I'm really just polishing the edge shape that I've got. A few minutes on each side is really all I'll be doing with these, just to get those scratches matched up with the, the lighter or closer together scratches that I'm applying with each increasing stone grade. And the 300 will still be doing a bit of stock removal as well, so it certainly will be making sure that the edge truly is being apexed, which means the stone's going all the way to where it terminates, making it sharp. See what's happened a little bit is that the knife's being sort of pushed back into the jaws, but it's very, very minute and it's not something I'm really gonna worry about too much. You might do this a different way. Um, all I'm gonna say is that my results will speak for themselves. So, I mean, if you've got suggestions, by all means, I'm happy to hear them. I don't really have an ego about this at all, but um, I think the best thing about the KME system is you really can't mess it up too much. All you probably need to do if you're not getting good results is do it for a bit longer and just make sure you're actually getting over your apex. And that's about it really. Like a lot of the other things, just a bit of time, a bit of extra elbow grease, you know? Move up to the 600 now. quieter as you go up and because they're making less abrasion.
Alrighty, so now you've got something to think about. You could decide that 600 grit and then a strop is what you're going to do, and that'll get you, I guess, more of a, a toothy edge or a, a coarser edge that sometimes might be preferable for, for your use or for even your steel. K390 is a pretty high vanadium steel, so vanadium carbide's a little on the coarse side. So you could potentially stop here and just jump to a, a leather strop or two, and that would make your edge quite nice. I'm a polished edge type folk. I, I, I enjoy the polished edge, even on on any steel, really. It's, it's just kind of what I like. So I'm going to persist. I'm going to go up to the 1500 grit stone, which will get, you know, the beginnings of a polish on it even then. And then I'm going to use my kangaroo leather strops this time and, uh, and hopefully draw out a nice polish that way. And at this stage, the burr is going to be quite minimized. In, in my experience, um, you won't be feeling too much of a burr on either side. But still be mindful, the last thing you should do when you're moving from a stone to the strop is do your upward burr removal or kind of straightening strokes. But right now I'm just going to be continuing to hone. Some people do circular, some people just go up and down, some people try and like do like a Z shape or a, you know, a diagonal shape. I, to be honest, don't notice a particular difference, but you can get as finicky or as overthinky as you like with this system. This is one thing that I have noticed as the machines got older, this sort of grommet around here has started to just, the, the friction fit is getting a little weaker. So every now and then, especially if I like make a bit of a, a drastic move, it can get knocked out and it's easy to push it back in, but I think that's the part that I'll probably need to replace, you know, relatively soonish. So these strokes, I'm just going up, up and across, and these will help any raggedy burrs that are still hanging on there, just to get knocked off entirely. Both sides. Just a couple of times. And we should have a pretty sharp edge there, really right now. Just one that's waiting to get polished and further honed. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, pretty sharp. Very sharp edge already. Let's hone it with some leather strops. Um, so most of these are already impregnated with their emulsions. Uh, just a drop or two on each one. Does the trick just from time to time. I'm more just doing this out of demonstration sake than anything else. Just, yeah, real minimal amounts. Uh, I'm actually out of 0.5, so that'll have to go without. And tap, 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 tap. And I just use my finger just to smush them on. I don't know if I'm being, if I'm overthinking it, but I use a different finger each one. I really do try and keep them, um, you know, set on their own 
emulsions and that's it. So <laughs> I don't know. Uh, cool, so I'll jump to the four micron CBN emulsion strop. So I'm now no longer sharpening at all. I'm just polishing, stropping, making a nice keen edge and downward strokes only with the strops. these a little bit off I reckon maybe that wasn't tight enough so I'm just tightening this nut back here up enough so now the strop stops before it hits the edge so it can't kind of go over the edge and accidentally you know tap the blade with a part of the system that is not a strop and I can see this really bringing out a polish already and this is only on the point four and I'll work my way up through all these strops um, when I do the stropping polishing. This whole process I just find really relaxing. It's one of those kind of like mundane, repetitive tasks that's actually quite clearing for your brain. Once, especially once you're not stressed about sharpening your knives anymore or about ruining them, once you know that it always works out fine, you can just relax and just kind of zone out. Just have a nice kind of afternoon sharpening a couple of knives. I really enjoy that sometimes myself. I always end up grabbing onto this thing. I should really be back onto this handle I've been talking so much about. Alrighty, that feels like about enough. And with everything, you can do this for twice as long as I've done it, and you'll probably get a little bit of a nicer result, even if, like again. So it's really about how much time you want to put into this. But um, yeah, I always find that once my eye is pleased with what I'm seeing, I generally just move along. Like I can see this is going to be a pretty nice polished edge already. And um, for this knife, you know, I'm totally fine with it. This will still be nicer than any edge that I could put on with a freehand system or, you know, even a slightly less um, specialized system. I'm not very, my hand-eye coordination has never been that great. So I need all this, you know, holding things steady for me. I'm a clumsy person. I've never particularly taken to stone sharpening or freehand sharpening. And yeah, freehand sharpening guys probably look at a system like the KME and, you know, bemoan that people like me need to, you know, need this structure or need the stabilization or whatever. But um, for me, it works really well for my physical limitations as they seem to be. shine to that already. Another thing you do need to be aware of, sometimes just from the movement, these can sort of come unscrewed a little bit, so you just find yourself tightening it up every now and then. Definitely not a big deal. Just checking the camera's still recording, that'd be embarrassing. with that you see I'm moving up through these pretty rapidly like I'm not um, you know I'm not lingering too long I feel like I'm getting a good result and as I said the result the edge you I'll, I'll be able to show you this really nice polish on here and that's really what we're after it's you know really how much you want to put into it apart from that you could fuss over a knife for an hour with just the stropping side of it you'd probably hit a bit of a glass ceiling eventually I would say in the scheme of how sharp you can ever get a knife, I reckon this system gets you about, you know, the top 10th percentile, like the, or the 90th percentile, better than 90% of other sharpeners or sharpening methods. 
only sort of that other 10% probably being bested by, you know, seasoned bench stone sharpeners with really good stones. People like Triple B Handmade, you know, Sean with his, you know, um, uh, $450, you know, crazy good bench top stones. Things like that are probably always going to get, you know, those, you know, those hair shaving. You can get a hair shaving edge off the KME, but I generally find it kind of stops at about a paper towel slicing level, you know. Um, yeah, whereas guys with the, the stone sharpening skills and probably just as importantly, the good stones, um, they seem to probably get slightly better results than I do, which, you know, that's just a part of the reward of a skill learnt over time, isn't it? So you remember this edge started off as a black edge, like a black um, acid washed edge. So that's why I kind of went with this knife so I can really ch show you how, how nice they can turn out. And when I do my final money shot, so to speak, you'll see the, the shine you can get just from, you know, I'm, I'm making a video, I'm talking about it as I go. I'm sort of half focused, but I'm not super, you know, I'm not, not agonizing over it as much as I may other times. I mean, geez, after this, if you wanted to, you could probably even hit it with like a, the 0.1 micron sticker strop, you know, you really get a, really get a glow out of it almost, you know. I think I prefer the tactile feeling of the strops. There's that slight grab to them where you can Kind of imagine in your head they're just really rolling across and enveloping the the apex there really doing a good job right i am gonna stop there because i think i've got myself a nice polished edge break it free of the kme there we go so loosen that up push it out jaws break free of the knife and let's examine this edge, shall we? I usually find to bring out the, the shine, just a quick clean up on my pants. Maybe just, you could spritz it up with a with an oil or something or with a WD-40 even, just give it a bit of a wipe with a cloth and your shiny edge will really, Let's find a nice little benchmark, shall we? Here, let's look at the what is, what is up, guys sticker. How do I do it? See, you can see the lines reflected in that edge there. You know, nice shiny edge, and that's that's what you get with the KME with relatively little skill, relatively little fuss, just that bit of confidence to actually sharpen the knife. Just the just the memory that you need to actually make sure you're hitting like you're actually going over the edge of the blade so sometimes you need to just put a little bit more time into it than you think but uh i have basically not had i remember when i first got the kme a few times i'd be like what am i doing wrong like you it, practice makes perfect and just that bit of extra you know maybe you take off a bit more steel than you really really need to and maybe that's you know maybe that's the benefit of being like a seasoned bench stone sharper and sharpener or whatever but um yeah Overall, for the layman like me, KME is definitely all I need. All right, because this knife has been fairly neglected, I am also going to start at 140, but I'm going to put a slightly higher angle on it, or lower angle, higher, about a 20 degree angle on it per side. And I'm just going to remove the chips first. It's just, it's rough along that edge. It just needs a lot of work. So 140 should do it quite quickly, especially on this VG10 steel. On the longer knives, they're much more sensitive to being pushed because it's just a greater lever action. Uh, lever effect so sometimes you'll find yourself just readjusting it from time to time just tightening it down as hard as you can but yeah pushing here just has a greater likelihood of pushing the knife up and making this line go crooked again so just to be aware of
just, as I said, a little trickier. Just got to keep more aware. Sometimes I even end up holding with my thumb if I'm having like a real issue, just like this. Just put the thumb against the spine of the blade there. Not a huge deal, but yeah, that's why I sort of prefer the KME for my smaller knives. And really for a kitchen knife, I generally use my Tormek or my WorkSharp, which are the systems that are kind of a little bit better and quicker for bigger blades. And again, this seems more likely to happen as well with a larger knife, just because you tend to, tend to sort of talk this out a little bit sometimes, this bit here popping out, this part here. The reason I'm taking so long on this side is I've got a pretty decent sized chip here that I need to sort of like push back towards. So the steel is, the stone's being very effective, but there just was some significant damage to the edge of this kitchen knife. Mm, that's annoying. Yeah, it seems to happen far more often with a bigger blade. I'm sure it's just this kind of grabs onto it slightly like the, the, the rod passes through it and pulls it or something like that. Cause yeah, it's just a much more common thing on a bigger knife, this bit here popping out. I definitely give this, it's an A plus for sharpening pocket knives, but for sharpening larger knives, I'd give it about a B. So I'm happy with that so far. I've got a burr going over most of it. There's a couple of chips in there, which as I go through should come out enough for me to be happy with. This is like my family's beta kitchen knife. So um, yeah, I'm not, not ever gonna get it amazing. I don't think I'd have to take off a lot of material to do that. So what's happening there is this handle part is much heavier. So what you can do is you can tighten this spring so it takes much more pressure to break the detent. Just helps a little bit with the bigger, heavier knives. So you really dial on that spring, increase the spring tension, and that should happen a whole lot less. So I'm still just kind of chasing back my edge a little bit because it does have some pretty decent sized chips in it. Definitely bearing on the other side, just a couple of chips. I'm just, we'll see how I feel about how much I want to take out of the chippy stuff. Is feeling better. Straighten 
a little bit more. I've got on top of about 95% of it and realistically for what we we'll use this for that should be fine so I'm just going to tidy it up from here and the the other grits may well remove help remove some of those chips or smooth some of them over as well there's two two chips that I'm really looking at that I'm probably would take another five or so minutes of pushing out but Again, that sort of stuff does reduce the edge life of the blade as well. It makes it thicker and less nice over time. So if you're just cutting veggies and stuff up with a knife, which is what this one does, a couple of chips actually isn't the worst as long as most of the edge is sharp. the 300. So I'll pause now because I'm going to use these films. So I'm going to go 9 micron, 3 micron, 1 micron. And that'll be my polish system today. Actually, half a micron. Yeah. So these stickers, I reckon they last about 5 or 6 decent level sharpenings each. Uh, and you get packs of, I think, 5... And they're not too badly priced, about $20 or something. And um, there's heaps of um, diamond films out there though in the woodworking industry, so you can get them in bigger sheets and whatever and just cut them to fit or whatever. I like to have the KME ones because, I don't know, I'm a fancy boy. Uh, so just a few drops of this honing oil on them just to keep them slick and moving. And then downward strokes only. And it'll rub off both a bit of the Sharpie that's left and also you'll see the steel will still be coming off and you'll get kind of a blacky, sludgy oil building up on the edge, which is normal. That's uh, the oil and the, and the diamond ab abrasion and everything doing its work. And eventually you see a really nice shiny edge start to peek through. I must admit, I probably put a little bit of pressure on that I'm not supposed to. You're supposed to just sort of let it just go under its own weight. But um, <laughs> I don't know, I get a certain tactile sense of just pushing a little bit harder. You can sort of feel it really working and, and it would definitely be shortening the life of the sticker, but oh well.
I'll do a couple of minutes per side and then just move on. And again, something you can fuss over for a much longer time than I am if you wish. I just want to get that shine. Nine micron finish starts to get a bit of a cloudy mirror. Do a few more passes and then I'll move down to the three. Whoops, again, and this is sort of what I was saying. This part here, definitely weakening up on my machine. This, just the, the, the detent or the click in of this plastic sort of grommet holding wheel here. And it really does get tested when you start to sort of pull around this side. The rod sort of grabs the side of it sometimes, pulls it out a little bit. Just something I'll probably need to end up replacing on the system. Alrighty, let's uh, just remember you can rest the wooden part on the knife blade, it's not going to do any harm. Just try and keep the steel, the aluminium part off of it. Moving on to the three. Three! If you're really fussy, you'd want to paper towel the shit off from the last time you used it, but my fuss level gets lower and lower <laughs> the further I go into a sharpening, so. There's three here, and really as this goes across, you can really start to see that polish coming out, that sort of, you start to see things in the room behind you kind of reflecting in the blade maybe. If you got some wallpaper or some a picture on the wall, you might say, oh, I think I can see it in the edge is always a cool and encouraging sign. VG10 is a particularly good steel for taking a polish. Certain steels, you'll notice, don't polish as easily as other steels. Uh, I notice the S35VN VG10 um, the, um, M390 take a great polish. Then you get stuff like um, Maximed, even K390 before. It was a little harder to get a really high polish on them, probably just because they're harder steels and the scratches that do get in there stay there, you know, and they're harder to smooth out. I reckon RWL34 or a CPM154, that's the nicest and easiest steel I can think of that takes a really nice mirror polish. Flip it over. Again there, see? Warts and all, you know, we're gonna hide stuff that goes on. I love this system, but that's something that does annoy me when I sharpen a bigger knife. Alrighty, that'll do us for the three. I can already see a nice polish there, so my job is basically done. I'm just gonna Add a little extra beautification with the 0.5. I lost my 0.5, but I had two 0.1s, so a 0.1 holder became a oh, 0.5 holder. And this one's still got a little life in this film. You see, every now and then I'll take a slight skim off of it, but even then, that's a workable film. Um, you'll just see the color start to wear out entirely and just almost seem like it's a clear sticker. They all have some color to them. It's just once the color starts going, that's when you really need to think about replacing it. Sometimes you just yep, catch a little bit of it, just to slightly, maybe don't lift as high and just catch a bit of that sticker. I am not the perfect KME user, that's for sure. Flip 
flip over and this will be the last pass then I'll be able to show you a very nice super sharp whoop, mirror polished edge well you know highly reflective edge I guess a mirror polisher mirror polish would mean complete perfection wouldn't it but I'm after a highly reflective shiny edge which I still call a mirror edge Alrighty, I'm gonna stop there. Take that guy off. Oh, careful. <laughs> Remember you've got a sharp knife. <laughs> Just drop the steel on there, chip the edge out. I don't think it did any harm. So just remember you've got a very sharp knife when you're finished and yes, you can feel how scary, grabby, sharp that is. So uh, again, wipe it off and we'll be able to show you a, a nice shiny, shiny. Let's have a look at how shiny this guy is. Alrighty, so you can see the twisted sisal. It's a bit of a lower edge, so it's not a suit. It's a 20 degree edge, this guy, I think. So you can see though, right in the blade edge there, yep, you got some nice reflections of those red, yellow, and blue there. A bit of denim still hanging off the edge there. Sharpness test. Dull dented, chipped out knife, and now it is slicier than you would ever need your kitchen knife, really. Well, the way that we use our kitchen knives. <laughs> anyway, super duper sharp. KME definitely does work as a kitchen knife sharpener. So yeah, overall, uh, demonstration-wise, yeah, it can sharpen kitchen knives. I prefer my Tormek for sharpening my kitchen knives, just because there isn't those kind of I don't feel like I'm pushing the limits of the Tormek when I do it. I feel with a blade this long, the KME is just about saying, easy daddy, that's about enough. That's about all I can, all I can take. Uh, so um, yeah, but it can definitely, definitely still be done. And if you are after a catch-all system, the KME can be it uh, for sure. I'd give it about a B for sharpening kitchen knives and like an A plus for sharpening smaller pocket knives. And I do feel like it's a pocket knife guys system. Uh, Things I haven't covered is the KME can sharpen uh, arrows. There's arrowhead jigs and all that sort of thing. It's almost marketed as an arrow and knife sharpener. Um, so that's cool, I suppose, if you're into into that uh, that uh, sport. Um, another thing is it can hold uh, blades up to about, I've had a quarter of an inch thick, can still hold them nice and straight. So I'll show you with my um, TRC Apocalypse, for example. I'll put that in the jaws. I've sharpened my Apocalypse with the KME. Does fine, again, same sort of, um, you know, emerging issues with a longer blade like the heaviness on one side often means you have to really dial in that back screw but uh really apart from just having to maybe go a little bit slower and a bit more thoughtfully than because when i do a knife on the kme i actually really go quite fast at it I, I really sort of smash away at it uh, just need to be a bit more thoughtful if you're using a longer blade just remembering that you can lever it up and push it crooked and also that uh, as you get to those edges you can on an older system like mine that's been around the block start to knock that divot point out which was a bit annoying as it goes on but i think if i was to replace that with a nice new plastic one it would probably lock in a lot tighter so that's just me that's on me and my system I've had it for as i said about a thousand sharpenings so a thousand sharpenings i think i've got a pretty good idea of it and i definitely recommend it it's uh, I, I can't speak to how the other systems are but um this one does the trick it's definitely brought its value into like my hobby and the channel of, them, of, of the um, you know the costs of the, the different parts and machinery and stuff. That being said, Nick Shabazz got me mine um, in like a stunning show of generosity. And I think also in support of just me being able to dial in my edges for the knife testing a bit. So that was always amazing. And I always appreciate Nick for that. It's probably one of the nicer things that's happened to me since I've done this uh, YouTube journey. So that being said, you're probably looking at about 250 to 300 for like the, the right KME setup, which to reiterate, I think is the, um, the KME itself, definitely a base, definitely a handle extension, a couple of those little uh, round grommets that lock in the rod, and then get some diamond stones and get either or, 
the glass slides and the stickers or the leather or four leather straps and the four different emulsion uh, diamond emulsion pastes or liquids um, you don't need to go overboard you don't need to get everything like i've got i'm sort of a reviewer and i've just played with everything for it and i think that's what this video can hopefully be of benefit to you that being said it is super fun to be able to choose what kind of polishing i'm going to do on any given day as well um, other accessories the uh, convexing rod if you have that specific need it does work well it does put a convex um, edge apex on it um, I found it hard to sort of blend it into a full convex knife bevel you probably still want stones to do that but um, if you're after a, yeah, a stouter uh, edge apex that's not a V apex you want to you want like a, a U shaped or you know a, a sharp U um, apex then yeah the convex rod will do the job for you no problems at all need a sharpie uh, and you need some lightish oil if you are doing uh, the stickers. And this Dan Toning Oil is uh, certainly very good and I'm almost through it, but uh, still got plenty of mileage left. Not super important, you could use just Singer Machine Oil or something you can just get from a hardware store as well. Just a thin oil, not a problem. Um, just your stones, clean them with dish water every you know, month or so once you feel like they're getting bound up. And then just dry them with alcohol and then wipe them off just so they don't get any rust amongst them because uh, I think they are on steel and I think one of mine I did notice I'd rusted it because I was just treating it like shit and leaving it out and often when I sharpen I'll leave it for you know I'll have to go to work and just leave it sort of all sitting there kind of thing which is fine that's the great thing about the KME you can just leave it knife stays once the knife's in those jaws it's staying there till you take it out so it's great but uh, yeah, just something to be aware of but apart from that it's a great system none of these high-end systems are cheap but they all do at the very least get at least one knife's worth of value out of them. So you kind of have to trade that month's knife purchase for, for the high-end sharpening system or whatever. But um, I think it's completely worth it to put some low, like for a low talent guy like me, I'm not, I don't have very good hand-eye coordination. Um, I don't have, you know, the resources and time to learn how to stone sharpen with good stones. A set of great bench stones will cost more than the KME. Like that's another, Thing. that's not a cheaper way to do it really like yeah you can have like your cheapo hardware store stones you know 20 30 dollars each but if you want those really amazing edges you're going to want like bonded cbn things like that anyway so anyway there isn't a super cheap way to get crazy good uh, edges that i'm aware of and this is about half of the course in cost and it gets really really good results for a really low skill level like i have Thank you to Brian for all his assistance over the years with KME advice and whatnot. Um, he's the, I think one of their reps and um, yeah, recommend the system. Hope you've enjoyed, long video I know, but I thought, you know what, it's good to show two full sharpenings uh, just to proof, so the proof's in the pudding if it wasn't already from the millions of knife tests I've done. All right, thanks for watching. That's enough out of this one. I'll see you later.